This demo is going to cover integration between InfoBlox, OpenStack, and Cisco's APIC, Application Policy Infrastructure Controller. That's part of Cisco's ACI, or Application-Centric Infrastructure, solution. So before I get started with the demo, I'd just like to uh, go through a couple of items. So all of our integrations, including OpenStack, the way it works is that we have RESTful APIs that we expose through the InfoBlox Gridmaster. These then provide an integration point into OpenStack, VMware, or Microsoft, or the cloud management platform. And as records are created within those environments, then when VMs are spun up or new networks are, are created, we can intercept those events within those environments. And then then make the appropriate RESTful API call out to InfoBlox to create the network or to allocate the next available IP. At the same time that we do that, we'll create DNS records for that particular virtual machine if it's an IP address allocation. And then, um, as appropriate, we'll either program our appliances to serve DNS and DHCP, or if it's a statically configured or statically injected virtual machine, then that network configuration data will be passed into the VM. So for example, in VMware environments, that tends to happen through VMware tools. So by having this tight integration, we're able to automate that portion of the process and really cut down on the time necessary to provision new VMs or create new projects for private clouds. Just to uh, explain how this works with our OpenStack adapter, basically, as I mentioned, we have an integration point with an OpenStack where all of the virtual machine allocations and network allocations then can be handed off to InfoBlox rather than utilize the uh, built-in IPAN capability within OpenStack. And the way that we do this is that uh, we built a, an adapter that integrates into Neutron. So the networking service itself. So by uh, virtue of this integration, then we can take over those IP address allocation events that normally would be processed with an OpenStack. And by doing so, this provides a, the ability to use InfoBlox really as the centralized IPAM system, not just for OpenStack, but for the entire enterprise, as well as the ability to use a centralized system for any cloud environment, whether it's OpenStack, VMware, Microsoft, so on and so forth. So um, this is basically the provisioning process that I'll outline in the demo. So as uh, users interact with the OpenStack Horizon UI, that will kick off a process that allocates the next available IP by virtue of a RESTful API call out to the Gridmaster. Within OpenStack, the IP addresses are actually allocated to the VMs using DHCP. So we'll program our DHCP server with that fixed address. And then that information will be passed down to the virtual machine as soon as it spins up. Through that process, we'll also automate the DNS record creation. That, that way, again, we provide that entire lifecycle provisioning process that enables that VM to get placed on the network, configured with its network properties, and accessible through DNS for any other systems out there. Let me go ahead and dive into the demo itself. So just to recap, the specific demo here is between uh, InfoBlox and Cisco a APIC through OpenStack. So the demo will show how InfoBlox DNS, DHCP, and IPAM complement Cisco APIC for automating end-to-end -end networking within OpenStack. While Cisco APIC takes care of managing the ACI fabric, the InfoBlox uh, OpenStack adapter automates IPAM and DNS for VMs as they are created and provides a commercial-grade DHCP service for the entire OpenStack environment. During the demo, I will show networks being created through the OpenStack UI, which will then result in configurations being updated simultaneously in InfoBlox, IPAM, and APIC. Similarly, as VMs are spun up on these networks, I will demonstrate IP addresses for those VMs being allocated from InfoBlox and DNS records being created automatically for these VMs. APIC will take care of applying the appropriate policies to the VMs as they're spun up on the network, as well as configuring the ACI fabric. Finally, I will demonstrate the ability to use metadata in InfoBlox that we call extensible attributes to determine which network to place a VM on. This enables tenant administrators to allocate VMs to the appropriate network, whether it be for a particular infrastructure tier, let's say web app or database, or a network that is configured for a particular application. And this is without having to know the network range or CIDR for the particular network. What I'm showing here is a lab setup with Red Hat OpenStack 5 running on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7. The OpenStack environment is configured with the APIC driver to automate network provisioning and network connectivity for the physical Nexus 9000 switch environment that the OpenStack cluster is connected to. In addition, we've installed the InfoBlox OpenStack adapter to enable automation of DNS, DHCP, and IPAM. So I've already logged into the OpenStack environment here. I'm logged in as a uh, admin user and I've uh, switched over to the demo project. Right now I don't have any instances or VMs created with that environment. 
There's no networks, so it's basically a blank tenant or blank project. In addition, I'm logged into the Cisco APIC console. When this tenant was created, it automatically synchronized with APIC using RESTful APIs to create this demo tenant. And if I look in here, basically there's not, not much populated. So it created one application profile designating this as an OpenStack app but there's no networking configured, there's no bridge domains. Basically, similar to what you're seeing in OpenStack, there's not much to see with an APIC at this point in time. And then if I uh, switch over to the Infoblox grid, so this is the user interface for the grid master. You'll see we have a couple networks created, but these networks are not allocated to OpenStack. These are just uh, networks that can be allocated to to whatever infrastructure outside of the OpenStack environment. So that's why the um, CMP type is set to none, none here. A CMP stands for Cloud Management Platform. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start creating some networks. As I create those networks, then you'll see automatically the OpenStack environment will call out to Infoblox to allocate that network within the Infoblox IP address management. And then similarly, it will pass that information into the Cisco application policy infrastructure controller, which will then configure the network for that appropriate network CIDR that's been allocated. So let's go ahead and create a network here. So I'll give it an address. Um, if I happen to pick a, a CIDR that was already taken within Infoblox, I would get an error here. But in this case, making sure to pick something that's not already been allocated. So if I hit uh, next here and then create, then you'll see automatically that network will show up within OpenStack. If I hit refresh here, then the network's automatically created within Infoblox. We tag it as an OpenStack network, and we bring in the network name and the subnet name that I designated within the OpenStack environment. So similarly, we update metadata within our system, the extensible attributes. So we'll reflect all the information that's available within OpenStack. So for example, what the network encapsulation is, is it VLAN or VXLAN, physical network names, segmentation ID, which in this case would be the VLAN ID, so on and so forth. So we reflect all the information that's available within the OpenStack environment, providing network administrators the ability to manage this within Infoblox without having to switch back and forth between the two consoles. So once this network's been created over in OpenStack, APIC automatically picks up this network and applies a EPG to it or endpoint group. The endpoint group happens to correspond to the name of the network, Net1. Net and then at the same time, a bridge domain is set up, which ends up configuring the switch ports then to allocate the, the particular ports necessary to connect up uh, any virtual machines placed on this network. So if I click through here, you'll see that the subnet here has then been allocated and is being used to configure the actual switch environment. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and create another network and then I'll tie the two together with the router to demonstrate how that all gets configured within the system. So immediately when that's created then you'll see that APIC will get updated with the endpoint group and then the bridge domain gets created automatically. And then over at Infoblox if I hit refresh then you'll see that the new network's been created with the appropriate OpenStack parameters. So what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and create a router. And then I'll go ahead and set up the interfaces for that router to connect the two networks. So I'll pick the um, first subnet here. So as soon as I do this, then what happens is that the IP address is allocated from within Infoblox. So if I go back into the network here, 
it's allocated this IP address for from the IP ma address management system and it's created the DNS record. So this is a, an example of the fact that we can automate DNS record creation and IP address management not just for VMs but basically any port. So if it's any interface, router interface for example, that's created within OpenStack, we'll manage that within Infoblack's IPAM. And just like with any uh, network that's created, you can see extensible attributes then will be captured for that interface. So I'll go ahead and create it, the, the other interface here to connect the other subnet. So similarly that, that portion is automated. And then if I come back and take a look at the, at the EPGs itself, you'll see a contract's been created between these two EPGs. So that reflects the connectivity and the fact that we have a relationship established between this EPG, which corresponds to network 01, and this other EPG that corresponds to network 002. So now that we have all the basic networking configured, we can start to create VMs and see how those get placed within the environment. So I'll go ahead and create the first VM here. and I'll attach that to the first network. So as soon as I launch this VM, again, it's gonna make another call out to the InfoBlock system. And immediately it creates, it allocates the next available IP for that network, creates the host record using a configurable pattern. So we provide the capability to specify if you wanna use a host-ip pattern or some other pattern. You could use the VM name itself as well here, so that's fully configurable. And similarly, we re reserve the IP address for the DHCP port, which provides the relay capability from the private network back into the InfoBlox DHCP servers. So if I go and, and create another VM, let's go ahead and place it on Net2. So this VM will then now be placed on Net2 over here. So we've created, allocated next available IP for that particular network and created the DNS record. They become immediately available for DNS. So I'm able to resolve uh, for DNS and similarly, I'm able to resolve reverse DNS. And if I were to go in here, I'm gonna manually add an alias record, for example. Then as soon as I add this alias, that, that alias record will become available. So um, let's say this is web1.cloud.infoblocks.com. So immediately we're able to resolve that address. So this demonstrates that you have the ability to manage these records, both automating the DNS record creation as well as adding records at a later point in time to add things like aliases or C names. So this is all been created and allocated. I want to go ahead and show being able to use uh, extensible attributes as a way to find networks as opposed to have to either know the network name with an OpenStack or know the CIDR. So the reason, if you look at the network topology and the actual networks here, you'll notice that there's nothing in the network names themselves that distinguish the particular network, one network from, from another. So as I look at the list of networks here, you know, there's nothing that I can use to distinguish that, say, one is the web tier versus the app tier. So what I can do, though, in InfoBlox is I can use the extensible attributes metadata to tag those networks to be the web tier or the database tier or the app tier. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So I've already created an extensible attribute um, definition that's tier. So I'll make the first one web, and then this next one I'm going to call app. So 
So I have these designations within info blocks. Now I can start to create virtual machines and place them on the network based on this extensible attribute rather than have to know what network or what particular CIDR is associated with that network. So I happen to have written a script over here. So I call it boot VM. And what this will do is it'll basically create a new virtual machine using the VM name that I give it. So we'll call it VM3 in this case. And then it's going to use an extensible attribute that I define. So tier. And let's use the web tier. And if this goes correctly, it should be booted on that particular network. So at this point in time, it's going to make a RESTful API call, go out find the network that corresponds to the web tier, and then create the virtual machine. And then immediately you see the VM, VM3 gets placed on this particular network that corresponds to this extensible attribute. So I can go back and do the same thing now, but let's use the app tier. And then this next VM automatically will get associated to Net002. So you notice that there's nothing I did to create this association other than create this extensible attribute and assign it to this network within InfoBlox. So similarly, I could use application type. So if I went in and just for the sake of argument, I said that, well, this network's actually the HR network. Then I could go spin up the next VM. And as soon as I hit this, then it will be placed on to this network. So there's the um, VM now being placed on that particular network. And as I demonstrated earlier, if I go back in, then we'll have automated the IP address assignment and the DNS records. So those now become available immediately to be served within the OpenStack environment. So hopefully this demo gives you a good sense for how we can automate with using InfoBlox all the IP address allocations and keep track of all the network creation events as well as automate DNS record provisioning and act as kind of a metadata repository for, for making it easy then to be able to decouple the network from the actual usage that that network really needs to be assigned to for a particular application. So by combining InfoBlox with APIC, customers can really achieve end-to-end -end automation of network deployment and core network services for their OpenStack environments. Not only does the InfoBlox OpenStack adapter automate DNS record creation, it enables users to deploy a commercial-grade DHCP solution for their OpenStack environments, eliminating the need to rely on numerous DNS mass processes running within their Neutron environment. All IP address allocation and DNS record creation along with DNS uh, with the lease history information is tracked within the InfoBlox grid, providing critical information for security auditing and troubleshooting purposes that would otherwise not be available or difficult to obtain. So every one of those RESTful API calls gets tracked through the audit log here. So you'll see that every time a record is created or deleted, that that event will, ha will show up here. So if I were to go and deprovision all these instances, for example, then you'll see that all those deletion events will now show up within the log here. So this provides the centralized visibility both for the API calls as well as for lease history. And then you can see automatically those records are cleaned up and now available for reallocation to additional virtual machines. So by using InfoBlox, customers can realize the agility promised by private cloud deployments and ensure the success of their private clouds. With integrating with APIC, we can demonstrate that you can provision, manage the entire end-to-end -end process for network provisioning. All of the configuration for these the switch infrastructure can be done through APIC automatically for OpenStack environments, and then we complement that with the core net, network services automation. This concludes our demo. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to illustrate how combining Cisco ACI with InfoBlox IP address management, DNS, and DHCP automation 
can dramatically simplify deployment and operations of your OpenStack cloud environment.